Oh, sorry, uh, there was some net problem. So we again we are back now. So what we, what I was saying, right? Like uh, I was just trying to uh, uh, tell you that, like I'm using a root user now actually in all this Ansible server node and node two. Okay, why? Because like there are some packages are there, some models are there which are not working properly. Okay, so there was a question from Sandeep actually. So what is his question that he's asking that can you ask, can you add it in a sudo user? Yes, we have to add it, sir. If it doesn't add it, it doesn't work out because this normal user accounts, whatever we have created, like DevOps user account, right? We had added this user account into, into the sudo list file actually. Even though we have added sudo list file, okay, even though this acts like a sudo user, when I was working for some kind of a models like package model, right? It was not properly working, it was throwing an error actually. So that's the reason I tried to switch to the root user. But whereas for some other uh, like packages, for example, few other models are there which I was facing an issue. That's the reason I choose to be as a root user itself, right? But whenever you guys are practicing, right, always make sure that you log in or you log in as a normal user only. With the same normal user only, you should have a, in all other nodes also, you should have with the same name, actually, with the same username, actually, not with the root user. Don't uh, do with the root user, okay? Is it clear, guys? Hmm? Okay, so now, so what we are going to do now, right? We will start writing a playbook file, a very simple playbook file, right? Okay, now, writing first playbook file. Okay, so basically, there are three different uh, playbook formats actually okay. the first format is not but the single line format uh, the second is a multi-line format and the last is not but we call it a dictionary format actually so these are the basically three different formats what we have in a playbook file so I I'll be showing all these three different formats, but basically in the industries, whenever the DevOps engineer is writing any playbook, always he try to follow this. He will write the playbook in a dictionary format, right? But whereas in uh, like, suppose like you try to download some articles or go through some articles, which is in the net. And there you could see some playbook has been used. They have used a single format or in some playbooks they have used a multi line format, right? But you should have an idea of what is a single and multi uh, line formats, but as I said, right, you have to always start working or start writing any playbook in the dictionary format itself. So this is the best way. Why again, I will tell you why exactly we have to use the dictionary format. That's the best way. I will just let you know. Okay. But in whichever way you can write, it will work actually. Okay. It doesn't mean that you are, uh, you know, like uh, if you write a single, the single format, like you will not be able to understand or it will not exit, not like that. Your Ansible will support any kind of a format. It supports all these three formats. Okay, so now, so guys, what we have to do right now, what I'll be doing right whenever I want to write the playbook, actually, I will be, I'll not be writing in a notepad here like that, or I, or copy pasting into into the file in the server, or I will not write directly. What I will do, right? Initially, I will try to write all this playbook file in our uh, Visual Studio code. I'll use a video Visual Studio code to write the playbook files. Okay, now, like for example. Okay, so let me don't think, let me go to my path. Okay, somewhere, Rajesh recording, I'll go to my Ansible. So what I will do, I'll just create one directory over here, actually something like uh, Ansible examples, right? So, so I'll just open a video studio code here. Okay. So it is open. Yes, it is open. Let me close this command line. So basically, guys, I have opened the Visual Studio code here, right? Okay. So now, so this is what I'll be writing. So basically, I will try to write that. So I'll just write a, uh, something first uh, playbook file. Before that, let me don't think guys, let me write the host file actually. What are the IP address which I'm using? Host or you can host or you can call it as an inventory actually. You can call anything host actually. Host. 
So what I'll be doing, I'll be just copying this IP addresses, right? Anyhow, node one, private IP address, I'll copy it. I need this reference, that's what, okay? I'll copy it, okay? And I will try to copy the node two IP address. I need this always, okay? So these are two IP address of node one and node two, right? Node one and node two, correct, okay, fine. Now I will write the playbook file. I'll just say first playbook file, first playbook file. Always, whenever you're writing any playbook file, always the, the extension should be either .yaml or .yml. Anything is fine. We can use .yaml, yaml, right? So this is how it is. Now, guys, whenever you write any yaml file, always the first line of the yaml file will always start with the three hyphens. So three hyphen represent that this is the beginning of the YAML file. See, suppose like for example, you want to write two YAMLs or two YAML, different YAMLs in the same file or into the same YAML file, right? Then you can write like this actually. This is the uh, first YAML, something YAML. And you want to write in the same file itself, you want to write one more YAML. Again, you can write it over here and you can write your second YAML like this. So what happened when you read it actually, when you try to apply this YAML file, right? How, what Ansible will say, okay, this is the beginning of the YAML file, fine. I should start executing from here. But it understands that, oh, there is one more 33 hyphen is there. Oh, this is the second YAML file. So it will treat this as a first YAML, it will execute this one, Ansible. And again, it will execute this one actually. So you could see there are uh, there are many YAMLs are there where you will uh, you will see this like this. And you can even write many, like that you can write n number of YAMLs in the same file actually. Usually what happens in the industry, right? People will always write only one YAML file, not like they won't write two, three. They will, if you they want to write second, third or fourth YAML file, right? They maintain a separate, separate file, not like in the same file they write it. But I'm just saying that always write the three hash represent that this is the beginning of the YAML file. It means that you can have multiple YAMLs in the same file itself. You can have. That's what we use, right? Now, after this, see, now whenever you want to write any YAML file, right? Okay, always it should start with a hyphen and you can even mention something like a name here. What is the name? This is my first playbook file. Playbook YAML file. Okay. After this, what you do, right? Whenever you're writing it, actually, you have to represent, you have to mention the host actually, right? That is a host. What is host? Host means I'll mention here as a all actually. So what do you mean by host means basically, you know that in whenever I was executed in ad hoc way, right? What I was doing, suppose I want to ping to all machines, right? What I was doing, Ansible, all hyphen M ping, right? So what do you mean by all? All means Ansible, what it will do, right? It will try to look into the ETC Ansible host file, right? So this is the static inventory file where you're maintaining all the IP addresses, right? So what the Ansible will do, Ansible will look into all this IP address which is in the host file. It means that all means it will try to look into this, all the IP address in the file, and then it will try to ping all those IP addresses by using this model, known as a ping model, right? Hyphen means ping model. So here all the represent what you are trying to take all the IP addresses or all the groups. Suppose assume that there are a lot of groups are there, right? You have a lot of groups. Like for example, here, if you come over here, here you have all the all the IP address. Two, two IP addresses are there, node one, node two. Even you can even club into the groups also, right? We have not come to the group, something like this. You can even club like this web. Okay, this is one group. So this IP address belongs to the web group, and this IP address belong to the app group, like this. See, you can represent even so when you are saying all, it means that all the groups. If there are group, it also understand that it means that you are actually using all the groups actually, all the groups IP addresses like this. So whatever using all in the command line, the same thing over here is nothing but the host we say actually, okay? And then after that, you say that become pseudo user. Always you use become actually. See, whenever you are using, apart from the normal user, apart from the root user, you are using any DevOps user or Mahesh, or Rajesh, Naresh, right? Uh, and you have did a passwordless communication, always whenever you want to execute any task, actually, you have to be a pseudo user. You know, right, in Linux, uh, that is in Ubuntu, whenever you are updating any package, what you will say, sudo apt update, right? 
or whenever you install any package, sudo apt install apache2 hyphen y. Like this you use, right? So why you are using a sudo? You are using a sudo because right, you are executing this command as a sudo user, not as a root user. So here, what you're saying that you are saying, if you're saying become, it means that become as a sudo user and execute it. That's what you say as a yes, actually. In some playbook, you won't find these things. In many other playbooks, you will see that become has been used, actually. So whenever there is a normal user, he is also a sudo user. Always it is better to use, use uh, this become you have to use in your YAML file. Right, guys? After that, what you have something is the tasks, actually. You know that I have mentioned some key terminologies right here. See, inventory, model, task, play, playbook, right? This is the task. Task in Ansible will consist of models, you say. Now, what I will do, guys, right? I will try to use some models. You know that in my uh, previous sessions, right? What I did in ad hoc way, right? I use some models, right? What are those models I use? I use some model as a copy model. You remember, I use this M service and all, right? I had even used this copy model also, correct? This copy model, file model, package model, M model, service model, right? So I'll be using this some of the models in my playbook file now. Actually, now so what is up? So now what I will do after the task? What happened, right? I have to use the models actually. So now what you have to do that you have to say enter, and you have to always give two space. Either you can give two space, okay, or four space. You need to always maintain the spaces. Spaces is very important. That is a syntax for it, uh, for the YAML actually. So I'll just say two spaces and I'll use hyphen. And what is a model I'll use? I'll use a copy model. Copy model. And here you could say that after you are writing a model, right? Always, what are the parameter arguments are there, right? You have to give again two more spaces like this. And from here you have to start something like SRC. You know very well that the in the Ansible, right? Okay, I think I have lost the connections. I have to log into the servers again. So I will log in as an Ansible server. I'll copy the IP address. Okay, sorry. I have to. Okay. Let me quickly log in, guys. Actually, I have to log in. So I'm logging as a root user. Okay, I logged in the root user. So this is the Ansible server, node one. Really, now the node two, cut node two, copy the IP address. I have logged in all the three servers, guys. Node one, node two, and node three. And you know very well in the in the Ansible server, I mean, making a local inventory under etc Ansible host file, right? So these are file, and you know that these are the two IP addresses which have been maintained, right? So if you see the host file, right? See seventy five and one thirty seven, same thing. Seventy five and one thirty seven. These are the two IP addresses that are maintained. And you can even use a ping command. Ansible all hyphen m ping. If this works successfully, it means that Ansible is installed and it is working fine. Yes, it is working fine, right? Now, so what I did, right? So if you remember, I did an Ansible doc and if I use a copy model. So I use a doc like this, Ansible hyphen doc copy model, right? So we had gone through this, right? In the last session, last to last session, right? And uh, we saw that how to use a copy model, right? So basically the copy model is something like you have to use the copy model, source, destination, owner, group, mode something you can use all this parameter so this we called as a parameter or we can call it as an argument to your copy model guys right so these are the arguments or they were the parameters actually so to do to always do the best right always have to go to the google okay and you have to always say ansible all modules 
Ansible all models. You, if you click on this all models, so these are all the models, guys. See, so many models are there, right? These are all the models, see. These are all the models. So what I need that I don't want all these things. I want the copy model. So what you do that? You have to say Ansible copy model. So you could see that actually it's an Ansible built-in copy model. There you have a copy file to remote location. Okay, you could see that actually here. Just open this document. Now you could see that actually that it has a copy model. What it does? Copy files to remote location. This we know very well. And these are synopsis. They've explained about what that model does. What that model does. And these are the options are nothing but parameters or the arguments what you pass. See, you could see that destination. See, source. Who is the owner? What is the mode? Remote SRC, right? And you could see that SRC. See, can you can't you see the same thing over here, guys? See, can you can't you see the same thing? So these are the parameters or number the arguments to what you pass to the copy model, right? Same thing here. They have given some elaborately. They have given it. So always you have to refer through this model. I mean, uh, you have to go to the Google and always you have to search and do, do it. And if you come over at the down, you will see some pretty good examples over here. See how to use that copy model. Same thing I'm using in my playbook file actually right so what i'm doing here in my first so i'll say source so what is the source okay i don't think i need to copy the etc possibility file okay where you need to copy it destination see guys always this should be aligned here okay that is one thing always so you could see that after the task i give two space here and i started with a hyphen and space and specify the model name copy colon then again give enter give two more spaces and start the argument from here see here it should not be like this this is a syntax error, guys. This is a syntax error. So always the argument should be again one or two space. You need to maintain a constant space. So in my whole Ansible session, right? I always give two spaces itself actually. One, two, two spaces like this. And I'd say, what is the destination? Okay, under the temp, I need to copy it. Okay. Who is the owner of the file? Okay. Owner, I think I have created some user account by name Vipro, if I'm not wrong. So let me go to the node one. If I do ID Vipro, right? ID Vipro is not there. Okay, let me do anything. Let me create it. Okay. Add user Vipro. Something I can do. Already exists actually. So then uh, Vipro is there. Huh? Cat of ETC possibility. Where is it actually? Vipro is not there. ID Vipro. You can use anything, guys, actually. Okay. Let me don't think cat of etg password. Which are the user accounts to have? Ashish Ravi is there. Okay, Ravi is there. And here in the note two, Ravi is there. Okay, fine. So what I will do? I will give Ravi itself. Ravi as a user account. Okay, group as a same Ravi user account itself and uh, mode as something like a seven seven permission permission. Okay, so this is guys one of the model. Which I have used under the task, I have used one model, copy model, right? Similarly, I can write many more. I can uh, write many more uh, tasks actually, like task, or I can write many other place. Like how to do? I will be using some file model. See, I'll be using one more model. See, now what happened? Whenever I'm using one more model, whatever the hyphen here is there, right? Hyphen. It should start with here. Hyphen file model. File model, right? And then you have to give space, and from here give two more spaces. What is the file? Path. You know very well that if you go through your Ansible hyphen doc file, you know very well that whenever you want to create a file, whenever you want to create a directory, you want to remove a file, you want to create a hard link, you want to create a soft link, you will be using this file model, right? We have used this, right? And if you see it actually, see how I use it. See, you have to give the path and you have to give the state actually. If you say, if you give the path and if you give the state as a directory, that that whatever you are doing, right, that will be created as a directory. So what I'll be using over here, guys, I'll be using path uh, slash temp. I'll be using something known as a AWS something, okay. And I'll give the state. What is the state I have to give? I have to create this AWS under the temp as a directory. Okay, let me create the directory. Okay, fine. So this is what is. Now, apart from this, what else we can do? We can write few more models, right? For example, since, guys, since this is a Ubuntu server, let me install some applications actually let me install some applications to install an application either you can use the package model 
you know very well that I can use this package model. We can use a package model because since these are the Ubuntu servers, right? In Ubuntu, it always supports the package manager or the APT package manager, which is used in Ubuntu. Whereas in Red Hat or in CentOS, you know that M is a package manager which are used, right? Right, this you know very well. So let me use the APT model itself actually. So what you can do here, you can either go over here, you can do like this, Ansible hyphen doc apt apt you can use see it will show that there is a there is a model by name apt so this also okay you can go through this or either you can go to the google and you can say that ansible apt model okay you can go through this way see? apt manage apt package ansible go just click on this open this so what it says that see apt it manages the apt package fine what is the synopsis? It manages the APT package. What is the requirement for this model? It needs a Python to be installed. Okay, we have the Python. We have an APT also, fine. Now, these are all the options or the parameter what you pass. So, one of the important parameters is the name. It means that what is the package name you want to install? Suppose you say that, Rajesh, in these two servers, Node 1, Node 2, I want to install some package by name wget package. I want to install here and here, right? So, this is the name of the package, right? So, here, when you come over here, what is the name you have to give? You're going to have to give the name as a wget. All the suppose you're installing an Apache package. So you have to say Apache 2. Okay, fine. After that, what else you need? So, okay, allowed auth unauthentication. This we'll see later. Auto remove, we will use all these things later. Cache valid, we'll see later. This also we'll see later. What is this force? We'll see later. Install recommended, okay, we'll see later. But what are the very important uh, you know, parameters? So name is one of the important parameters which you have to always use along with the app model. Okay, fine. After the name, if you come over down here, only upgrade, okay. Purge, suppose you want to remove the package, you have to use purge. State, okay. Whenever you want to install it, you have to always say it as a state colon present. But uh, here you have something as a defaults actually. Default means if you're not mentioning the state also, still it will install it actually, but still, uh, it will install it because like here the default value is always present even though if you don't mention the state as present still what happens the package will get installed because there is a default value by name present by default it is there so whichever you see the default right always those parameters will be applicable always if you're not mentioning allow authentication it'll always be no only if you want to make it yes then you explicitly make it as actually now come over here state you have to mention name you have to mention right there is one more thing which is update cache. So, son, can you give, see, guys? There's an update cache is there. It means that whenever you want to run, when you're whenever you want to update the package, you have to always say apt get update. Like for example, I have a in the node one. Assume that I want to update the package. I'll say sudo apt update. See, in the command line, I'm updating the apt package manager, right? Or apt apt package repository. I'm updating it. How I can achieve the same thing over here in case of model, you have to use this update underscore cache is equal to yes. If you use this update underscore cache is equal to yes, it is same as you are executing this command apt update, sudo apt update, like that, right? And there is something as upgrade actually, which we will see later. So, and if you come downwards here, they have given nice examples they are given. You can go through this. It is very simple to understand. Can I use the apt model? Now to install some package in the node, yes, we'll do it. So how to do it? So again, I am using one more model. So I have to start with hyphen. So it should align with this here, hyphen. Okay, what is the model? APT model, fine, I'm using. Okay, here, from here, give two spaces, one, two, right? What is What are the parameters which you are using here? See, I'm, I'll be using a parameters and name, actually, okay? Name I'll be using, fine, name. What is the package you want to install it? I'll install the duplicate package. Okay, so firstly, go to the server, just check if the WR get package there or not. See, missing you are, oh, it's already there actually. So it's already there. WGET is there over here. Okay, it is already there. So I don't want this package. I will use a tree command. See, tree is not there. Okay, here also tree is not there. Okay, let me install the tree package here. I don't, uh, WGET is already installed. So I'll be using tree package. So tree package, I have to install it, fine. Then what I'm doing that here, you can just say state present, state is, by default it is, if you're not mentioning anything, still it will install it, but you have to mention explicitly state is present. But before state is present, 
I'll be using this update underscore cache is yes. So that you, before you install the package, first you need to upgrade the APT repository cache. So you'll say yes, because you could see that there are two parameters, either yes or no. It is run equivalent of the APT update before the operation can, can be run as a part of the package installation as a separate step. Okay, fine. Then I will say as a state as, what is the state? I'll mention as a, either present or you can even mention the latest also, I'll mention as a present. So guys, this is a very simple YAML file which we have written, okay? Now, to validate it, whether this YAML, whatever we have written, the syntax is correct or not, there is something known as a YAML validator. You can just search for the YAML validator. If you go through this, you can see that yamllint.com is there. Open this. And here, what you can do, guys, you can just copy paste this. Just to verify if there is any syntax error is there, it will show a syntax error. See, I'll copy paste it. And I'll just say go. See, it says it's a valid YAML. Assume that, guys, assume that here, see, you're not given two space here. See, you're not given two space here, okay? Now I'll do one thing, I'll copy this whole stuff again. Here, I purposely have removed the space just to see that whether it will throw any error or not. So, see, mapping value not allowed in this context, line number nine and line number 10, like this. So it means that there is some syntax error is there, right? So what you can do here, Q2 space, Q2 space. Now you check it, see, now it will be a valid ML. So always you have to always make sure that you use this YAML validator tool. Any one tool you can use to just check initially whether your YAML is correct or not. Okay. So now my YAML is correct. Okay. So what I will do, I'll try to run this YAML. Okay. So what I will do, I'll go to the Ansible here, Ansible server over here. Okay. And what I will do that, let me create one directory, Ansible if an example, something like that, I'll create, I'll go to the Ansible, instead of the Ansible examples, I'll just say uh, first uh, playbook.yaml. I'll go to insert mode. I'll just try to copy this. Before that, let me give this space over here. So I think I have to give the space. Okay, let me give the space. Okay, now it's fine. Let me copy this, guys. Copy this. Paste over here. So this is my YAML file, right? Then I'll save this one. Now, whenever you want to run the YAML, always you have to say Ansible. If you execute, if you just do a tap, tap, can you see that there are so many options as Ansible, Ansible country, Ansible connection console, Yes, there is something like the Ansible hyphen playbook. Okay, let me use this Ansible hyphen playbook and specify the playbook file. Now here I can run it. Before I run it, let me do a syntax from the command also, hyphen fn syntax hyphen check. I can use this option to validate whether this syntax of this file is correct or not. See, enter. See, it says that it is not throwing any error. So it means that it confirms that actually there is no syntax error in this YAML file. Correct, guys? Now what I will do, I'll try to run your YAML file without using this syntax check now. Now just see, guys, what other things will happen now. Enter. Here, it says that place, see, this is my first playbook YAML file, okay? What it said, it's gathering facts actually, okay? It is doing a copy task, okay? It is doing a file task, and it is installing the package, okay? So now, if you see carefully here, what it's doing, you're, it is trying to copy the ETC possibility fee of what? ETC possibility of your Ansible server, it is trying to copy to the node ones under the temp directory. And for that, it is giving the permission 777, and the user account it is giving is a Ravi, and group account is also given as a Ravi. Can, can I validate it? Go to the node one, go to the temp directory, and just say ls hyphen l. Can you see here, AWS, not sorry, possibility file has been copied and the user account is Ravi and this is also Ravi. What is it? Mode, it is not given the permission. Why? Why it is not given the permission? 
मोड कोलन सेवन 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 करेक्ट राइट ओके व्हाट इज इट सर मोड डू हैव टू गिव जीरो सिक्स सेवन सेवन मोड जीरो सिक्स सेवन सेवन Okay, I don't know. Like, let us see, guys. Actually, is it something like? Ah, uh, okay, open it, guys. Open the same playbook file. First dot playbook file. Ah, uh, it should run. It should give the permission. Ah, uh, not sure actually. It should give the permission. so you are copying it is a possibility under the temp fine on the temp and then ravi's your account group is ravi mode is mod mode right correct mod mode is correct so okay let me say let me read on the uh, uh, playbook file again ansible hyphen playbook specify the yaml that is first on hyphen playbook dot yaml So now let me go back to here. Just do ls f n l. Let's check. Now you could see that the now it has given the full permission. Okay, we have to give that zero also. Now go back to here in the node two and do ls f n l. Now here again, what happened? The password has been created and it has given the user account and the group account as Ravi Ravi. Fine. After that, what you're doing next? Uh, you're trying under the temp. You're trying to create a AWS as a directory. Can you see over here, guys? AWS as a Directory has been created here. Also, AWS has been created. Fine. After that, what you are doing? That you are trying to install some package, tree package. Can you check whether the tree package is there or not? See tree. Now it is installed. Now it is executed. Means the tree package has been installed. Tree has been installed. Right. So, so what we are doing? Right. We have written our first playbook file, and here what happened? Right. With the help of the first playbook file, we are doing a multiple tasks here. So copying. and then creating a directory and executing or installing some package so guys this whatever we are representing over here right this one this we call it as a dictionary format this is this we call it as a dictionary see the third format what we use this is nothing but this is the dictionary format so this is what the mostly uh, you know the devops engineer uh, you know prefer to write the yaml file under the dictionary format file okay so you have if uh, just let me know if you have any doubts guys till here just let me know if you have any doubts ne not to ping uh, ne not to put in a chat you can just unmute and you can ask me if you have any doubts okay if you don't have any doubts yeah we'll we will proceed further okay okay now so this is what here now if you see if you observe carefully i had executed for the first time here though i have executed for the second time also you could see that when i executed the first time here it says that this is my first playbook yaml file could you see here that here i have mentioned the name as this is the first playbook file yaml the same thing is been printed over here fine so it means that my entire playbook this is what my entire playbook says about that this is my first playbook file okay fine okay after that you could see that there is something the task uh, which is something as a gathering facts now if you see over here is there any task i have which i have written as a gathering underscore facts no right but still what happened ansible intern is using some task with the name gathering underscore facts what is this we will see later don't worry now but you just make sure in your mind that whenever you are running a playbook by default what happen an ansible intern will execute itself one task by name gathering underscore facts so what the gathering underscore facts will do that gathering underscore facts will try to check the hardware information about this two nodes node one and node two or this two ip addresses so whatever you have mentioned the it is ansible Uh, host file right those ip addresses it'll try to gather the information about the operating system it'll try to gather information about the hardware everything that's what gather_facts do so by default ansible 
whenever you are running it will by default it does it okay fine so this just keep in your mind because in your upcoming classes i will be using how to you know use this gather underscore fact effectively in playbook we will see that after that what you are doing right here you are trying to use a copy model actually so copy model you are using it what you are trying to do you are trying to copy this password file under the destination one node one node two under under a slash temp you are trying to copy this it is a password file that's what you are doing and you could see guys here it is showing it as a orange color it means that it has did that copying it means that there are changes are there which is been done so that's what whenever any new changes are getting affected always the color will be in a orange color similarly you have some task by name file can you see here file is a task actually here so what you are doing here you are trying under the temp of under the temp you are trying to create a aws directory so it has been did on both the ip address whatever is there in the host file after that what you are doing that you are using an apt model what the task you are doing that under the, for the task apt you are trying to install the tree package right so that is what you are doing over here now you could see that actually out of this the majorly there are three changes are there one is a copy model or task file task and apt that's why it say the change is equal to 3 3 now coming down here guys when you see here i did a minor changes i did a minor change here i just added this zero minor change again i rerun the pack uh, ansible uh, sorry the first playbook file again i ran it now you could see that it has re executed this copy task again because you did a minor change over here it means that you are trying to make it make sure that the mode should work now so that's what you are still it is showing is an orange only but here you are trying to create a directory now it's it checks whether there is a directory by name aws under temp it is there it doesn't do anything so that's the reason you could see that it is in green color similarly it will try to check if there is any tree package there or not oh it is there do nothing so it is showing a green color you could see that out of four task 1 2 3 4 task okay only one task has been changed this one only this right rest other are unchanged so that is what we called as item potency it means that if there is no changes has to be done right so ansible will not do anything it just ignores it actually so if i rerun the same command again ansible if in playbook you could see now that what will happen that everything will be green only nothing will be changed over here see see zero changes no changes are occurred it means that whatever the previous state was there everything is as it is so ansible is ansible ansible is not doing anything over here so this is what uh, the feature of your ansible is but it maintains the item potency you execute 100 times it will show the same result right so that's what it is now so this is what we call it as in a distinct format right now you say that rajesh what is the single format single line format okay single line format so guys what we will do today we will try to Uh, create a single line format multi line format uh, uh, right and also we will try to check like how you can actually uh, run in a json format today we will try to complete that thing okay so now what i will do let me create one more file actually what i will say single line single line uh single line hyphen playbook dot yaml so instead of using yaml i will use yml now okay i can use anything either you can use yaml or yaml same thing guys whatever it is there na no, same thing right so i use hyphen fn fn minus name okay. this is a single line format playbook okay yes. single line format okay now after that what as i said right you should maintain the alignment here so what is there you have to mention as a host what is host all okay fine and after that become yes so become work run as a sudo is a fine after that you are mentioning that tasks actually right task okay give two space okay hyphen space copy okay what is it you are doing here see source src is equal to under etc uh, shadow for shadow destination is copy under the temp okay owner is 
Ravi. I'm not mentioning any group. Mode is 0666. File model. Same thing, guys. Whatever you are having now. See, this is a dictionary format. So the same thing, a single in format. See how I'm using it. What is it here? You're trying to create a AW directory. Let me create one Azure directory, right? Path is equal to slash temp. I'll mention Azure here. State as what? As directory. See? Right? See? Again, what else you have? APT. Okay, fine. APT, right? APT model. Okay. What is it? What is the APT model? You are trying to use a name, update cache, state. So I'll be using only name and the state. I want to use update cache now. So what is it you need? I'll just say name equals. What is the package I want to install? Let me do one thing. Let me install some other package, uh, something like a curl package. Actually, okay. Let me check if the curl package is there or not. Curl package. Curl is there, guys. So what else you have? Uh, curl. You have. Uh, Slash where ww html yeah that is also there. What else package you need actually? Net stack package is also will be there actually. Okay, that is there. Let me check if I have a NFS server actually. NFS server package, or else let me check uh, system CTL NFS NFS hyphen server. Uh, Status. Okay, NFS server is not there. Let me install that package. Okay, to install the NFS, you have NFS hyphen utils is there. So that's the package name. Okay, name. And what else you have? You have something as a state. So state is nothing but present. So now, see, guys, here you could see that, see the same stuff here in a single line, you have compressed it and you have written in this way actually. Now, the difference between this and this is nothing. Both are same, actually. Both are same. The thing is that actually here, if you, many of the books or many of the articles, you could see that they have written in the single end format. So that's what if you get inside the industry where they're writing a playbook file, and if you see this format, and if you, you have, if you have already worked on this format, assume that you've been working this format, and if suddenly if you see this format in any other industry, right, don't get panic, actually. So it, this is also one of the way to write it, actually. So this is in a single line you are representing. Here you could see that in a multiple different different lines. Next next line you are mentioning it. Both are same actually. Okay. So here what you can do that you can just copy this, copy this, go to the syntax validator, check it if the syntax is correct or not. So check it. Yes, it is correct. So it's a correct format. Okay. There is no error like that. Right, so there's no error actually. Right, so that is fine. So what I will do, I'll just copy this, guys. I'll just copy this, and I will do one thing. I'll come over here and I'll say it as a vi single line. <clears throat> what is it? Single line playbook. Dot yaml. Just paste it like this. See, and I'll just save this file. So to execute this playbook file, I'll say Ansible hyphen playbook single line. Uh, let me check the syntax hyphen hyphen syntax hyphen check. Okay. So there is no error in the syntax. Yes, it works. Now you execute this playbook file, right? Without using this option. Now you will say that. See? So it is gathering facts. See? It is executing it. Ha, now what is happening? No package NFS hyphen utils is available. So it says it says that actually there's no package in it, NFS hyphen utils. Right. So what you have to do that you need to check it in a net actually. Installing NFS package in Ubuntu in Ubuntu uh, 18.04. One second is. So you will get to know like what is the package name and all you'll get to know just you have to browse you have to check it what is the package name. you might be wrong. So that's the reason always whenever you're writing any playbook file right? before you write a playbook file you have to first check the commands 
you need to stand alone only you have to you know like uh, in a, some test machine you have to test it so you could see that nfs hyphen kernel hyphen server so this is a package guys nfs hyphen kernel hyphen server see this is a package so i have to rename this package see i'll copy it first i will let me update over here see correct guys so that is what i have to use this package name right similarly here come over here same thing i have to do over here also Just save this file, and again try to run the same Ansible hyphen playbook single play single line hyphen playbook dot yaml file. Just see now. So now what it is doing that it is trying to gather fact. Okay, copying is already been done. Okay, Azure Directory has already been created. Now APT is trying to install it. Let's see whether the APT is installing or not. See, it is installed. It has already installed. Okay, it has installed that package. That's what you are. Not, it is not throwing any error, right? Here, if you go back here, again, if you go to the temp directory, you are already in the temp directory. See, now the Azure has been created, and you could see that the etc shadow file has been copied. Same thing over here also under the temp of node two. If you do an lsf and l, see Azure directory has been created, and the etc shadow has been copied. So this proves that actually this single line is also working, right? See. Under the temp Azure, as you want Azure, and also it is a shadow file you want to copy under the temp. See, this both these tasks have been executed. Even this task is also been executed. Is it clear, sir? Guys, I am clear on this. Do you have any doubts, Sandeep, Mahesh, sir? Any doubts you have? No, sir. Uh, Sandeep, sir. All good, Rajesh. Great, yeah. So, so you are executing this. You call the single line format. So, don't get panic whenever you see this. So, this is also same thing as this actually. But here, one disadvantage is over here is that actually that when uh, uh, catching the error here is little difficult. For example, assume that here uh, I'll go with the playbook file itself, okay, and I will open that single YAML, single line happen playbook. Assume that you are not giving equals here. Just I'm giving an example. You are not giving equals here. Assume that you miss that equals actually, like this actually. Now just see how the playbook runs actually. It will throw an error actually. Purposely, I have removed that. It is throwing an error. So debugging that error is little difficult. It shows you the error appeared in this in this file blah blah under line number six or column number seven, but maybe elsewhere in the file depending upon the exact problem. So this is a little tricky. See here, it shows you very clearly that here is what the error is showing. So by seeing this error, you should make it. Oh, owner is equal to oh, I missed that equals. But whereas here, when you use this format, digital format, no, here it will exactly show you where that error is actually. You need not to worry much actually. So here in the digital format, uh, diagnosing the error is very simple actually, compared to single line format. Okay, compared to single line format. Okay now. So now the next what we will see is a double line format actually. Multi-line format, multi-line format. Same thing. It's very simple, guys. It's not that difficult. So I will write one more playbook file known as a multi, uh, multi-line uh, playbook format. Playbook YAML file. Dot YAML YAML file. Same thing, guys. It says hyphen hyphen hyphen. Okay, hyphen name. This is. So, multi-line playbook format example. Something. Okay. Now you'll say that hosts all fine. Become yes. Okay. Tasks. Okay. Hyphen copy. Okay. So what you're doing? Using a copying here. So nothing, guys. Actually, you have to do like this only. It is nothing. It's it's as look as same thing as. So what I'll do at this time, I'll copy the uh, groups file under the destination to the temp directory. Owner is nothing but the Ravi. 
group is nothing but Ravi itself. Mode is nothing but 0, 6, 6, 4. File model. Path equals. What is a path? Under temp directory, let me create a GCP directory. State is equal to directory. So APT model. So what I'm doing? Name is equal to, let me install the Apache 2 package. State is equal to present. That's all right. See? So if you ask me what is the difference between the multi-line and the and the and the normal history, uh, if you see both are same actually. Here, instead of using this colon colons, right? I'm using this equal sign. That's all, guys. There is no other difference here. So this is the multi-line. So here also, this also sometime you will see in some articles or examples while reading it. Others in the industry, you might see these examples. So don't get panic, actually. It's all same only. So let me copy it. Let me do the I won't do that validate now. Let me go over here and let me create one file vi multi-line hyphen playbook dot yaml. Copy it. Save this file. Just check the syntax here itself. Ansible hyphen playbook. Always, whenever you want to execute any playbook file, sir, you have to use the command ansible hyphen playbook. You have to always use. Sometime, what happened, right? In your Ansible, uh, in your playbook file, right? Sometime, what happened, right? You will be missing this become is equal to yes, right? You will miss to use this actually. Suppose if you're missing this line, if you're not using this line, in a command line, you can explicitly use like this Ansible hyphen playbook. Hyphen B become a pseudo user like this. You can use hyphen B also can use this, right? And what is the, what is your, uh, uh, playbook name, multi playbook, hyphen fn syntax, hyphen su syntax, hyphen check. The syntax is correct. Now let me run this playbook file. So gathering facts, you could see that this is a multi line playbook format. So whatever you have mentioned over here, so this has been executed, this has been executed. Already Apache is installed, that's what it is not installing anything. Already Apache has been installed, right? So all these three tasks has been executed. See, these three tasks has been executed. Here, guys, you go over here. You go over here and if you do ls on l You could see that GCP has been created, see? Data has been created. You could see that etc groups file has been copied, see? Yeah, same thing in a node 2 also. Now, as I said earlier, guys, so now this is clear, right? All these three formats, it is very clear. But now moving forward in all our sessions, in all our recommendations, I will be using only dictionary format. I will not be using any multi or single. I won't use this formats. I'll be only using the dictionary format because this is the most widely used uh, you know, format by the all DevOps engineers in the, in the industry, actually. Okay. Hmm. Now, here, uh, coming back to here, so what I was trying to tell over here that actually, that whenever you are writing the playbook file, you will always be writing a YAML file actually, always. You could see that most of the time, the DevOps engineer, whenever they write any Ansible playbook file, they will always write in a YAML file. Rarely you see that uh, the people are writing a JSON file, but still in some industry, you could see that the playbook has been written in a JSON format or in the JSON file. So let's see that how to check just to do a JSON format actually. So what you will do that, let me do one thing guys, I will not do anything here. I will just try to, uh, you know, like I'll do some changes over. So let me do uh, MOTD file. Okay. I'll try to copy it and here uh, Rajesh I'll give. And here some other, let it be same package actually, same. I'm just trying to install same thing. So what I will do that, this is a YAML format guys actually. This is the YAML format, okay. Or else let me do one thing, I will not use the multi, I will use the, Additional format only. This only I use. So let me don't think. Uh, Rajesh, do you mind creating new JSON file? Uh, I mean, no, no. I will just tell you, sir. I will just tell you. Like for example, right? Yeah. Uh, sure. Playbook first. Playbook dot JSON file. 
<laughs> let me write. Uh, let me uh, because there is a converters are there, sir. <laughs> Why I have to uh, you know really break my head in. Uh, right, right. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yes. I will just try to copy this, paste over here. As of now, okay. I'll just do some changes over here. So I'll just try to copy this MOTD file. Message of the day we say, and here I am just uh, trying to copy. I'll just try to create a directory by name Rajesh here. And this one, I don't need anything. I can even use an Apache two or same thing. Apache two, same thing. Okay. Now what I will do that there are many online tools are there. Uh, converters are there which are used actually. So here, if you go over here and if you just say um, YAML to JSON converter, there are many are there guys. Actually, see you could see over here that best YAML JSON converter or this is there. You can open anything actually. Open over here. See, so here you need to give the input of the YAML actually. So I let me copy this. The same YAML. So I will copy it over here. Paste it here. See, when I paste it over here, you could see that you got the JSON format. So you can copy the entire JSON format like this. Copy this entire JSON format and just go over here into the node. Just say like first a book in in JSON JSON dot JSON format JSON JSON format. See, this is a JSON format. You can even write. It's not a big deal to write it. So this is the JSON format. Just save this file. Run the same stuff, sir. Ansible hyphen playbook. First playbook hyphen in JSON dot JSON format. Okay. The playbook will run. Okay. There is some problem with that. There's no MOTD is there. That's what. That is fine. It means that there is no file in that. No, let me do one thing. Let me do some more changes. But you understood, right? Like uh, basically. I don't have this MOTD. I will have etc. Uh, groups. Uh, you can even just say the shadow or the shadow file. S H A D O W D shadow. Okay, so I'll save this file. See, we can run over again. It will work now. See, it will work now. So either in the JSON or in the YAML, any format, guys, you can use to run a, write a playbook file. But mostly 99, 100% you will see that people are using only the, what, only the YAML format only they write it. Is it clear, guys? Now, you could see that actually that when, uh, when you are running this actually, you could see that it is showing this is the first playbook file, okay? The same stuff, whatever it is there over here. But you could see that actually each and every task, this is showing with a model name actually. But it is not showing what exactly it is doing over here. Suppose you want to print some data over here, actually, right? Or else I'll go to my uh, first playbook format. I'll go here. Here also the same stuff. So what you can do over guys here, you can do like this actually, like something like this, hyphen name, right? Uh, this is to copy the etc. ESS password file to temp directory, like this you can use. So when you're using like this, see, you should make sure that actually that you should remove this hyphen actually. And, uh, sorry, not hyphen, yeah. So you should make sure that you should remove the hyphen over here because here the hyphen will start for the first time. Afterwards below, same thing over here also. See, hyphen name, let me do it, let me give him space. Name. See? This is used to create AWS directory. Something for your understanding, right? Always it is always better like this. So when you're using hyphen here, you should remove the hyphen over here. Okay. Similarly, here also. Hyphen name. It is always better to give always names, guys, actually. Okay. This is used to this task is used to install tree package. It is okay. 
and then you have to remove this hyphen. Okay. Now what you do that you copy this. First, let me check in the validator it is right or wrong. Yammer validator. Okay. Copy, paste it over here. Check it. Yes, it is a valid one. So now what I will do that. Let me create on something like a uh, naming iPhone playbook dot yaml file. See, save this file. Then you run the command ansible hyphen playbook naming dot hyphen playbook dot yaml. Let's see. For every task, it is saying this is to copy the ETC password. With this, you will get to know what each and every task is doing. See, earlier it was not mentioned. You don't know what the task is all about. So, by seeing this, so only for the readability format, a very good readability format, you should always use a name for each and every task. Before you start writing a task, right, you should use always hyphen name and write this task. Write the name actually. It means that this kind of a description you have to write it like this. Is it clear, sir? Yes, Rajesh. Yes, sir. So, guys, I hope that today, uh, like you like the way we have written, started writing the playbook file, right? So, we just started now writing a playbook file. Now, you will see that, like in the future, like suppose uh, an exercise for you guys, for you all, like right. I want to write the same thing. Any, uh, you have to install the install the Node.js actually, Node.js application. Suppose in my case, because both the servers like Node 1 and Node 2 are Ubuntu servers, right? So I have to install the Node.js in my Ubuntu server. So you have to write a playbook file to write to install a Node.js application. So see, installing Node.js on Ubuntu 18.04 or 20, whatever, whichever server. So you need to follow this, any one of the document. Always the best document is a digital ocean Node document. You can even go through this also, NPM, see? They have mentioned they have written all the commands. So you have to only use this command. See, they use some curl command and all fine. Okay. See, they use then you have to use this. See, sudo apt install node.js. And then once you install it, to verify it, you have to say node hyphen fn version. So, guys, can you write a node playbook file to install a simple playbook file to install a node.js? Right? So this is sure, an exercise yeah. for you guys. Yes. You have to install the node.js application write playbook file write a playbook file sorry write a playbook file to install node.js application ubuntu 18.04 simple guys just it's a matter of just five six, five, six lines that's all hmm? Okay, guys. Hello. Then, uh, if you don't have any doubts, like we'll stop the class, and tomorrow again we'll continue, right? From here itself, where I stop. There are many other things are there, very interesting stuffs are there which we want to come up, come across. We'll be learning a lot now. Okay. Sure, Rajesh. Thank you very much. So, uh, Naresh, can you stop the session? Yes.